ChatGPT projects just got a major overhaul. And the sad part about it is almost nobody knows about it because very few people know about this powerful tool right within their ChatGPT accounts. Now, to be fair, that's because only Plus and Pro users had access to that. But that's all about to change. In this video, I want to show you how to leverage this powerful tool within ChatGPT. <laughs> Welcome back to the AI Driven Marketer. I'm Dan Sanchez. My friends call me Danchez. And today I want to show you one of my favorite tools because this has been an awesome tool since it came out last December. It hasn't even been out for a year yet. And they're dropping a major upgrade here in September of 2025. So if you're new to this, I want to be sharing my screen to kind of give you an overview of what projects is, talk about how I'm using it, and then show you a quick demonstration of how to set up the project instructions so you can become a power user of it very quickly. If you're listening to the show, just know that this is a video podcast. I will be demonstrating this, but also talking through it. So if you're listening while you're driving the car or doing a workout or something, you'll still be able to get the gist of it as we move along. But you can watch it in Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and on my website at danchez.com. Everywhere else, it's probably going to be audio, but the video is plentiful and everywhere. So if you want to tune in and see what I'm doing, just open up that screen and take a look. Hey, just a quick interruption. This is Dan here, and I just want to apologize because I've never shared this resource with you. It's from a good friend, Brian, and he created a fantastic resource that has brought him a high ticket uh, customer every week for the last 52 weeks. The first time I saw it, I couldn't believe how simple it actually was to implement, and I'm using it even in my own business now. And it's a tool around how to leverage not your own audience, but other people's audiences in order to generate leads and get clients. So I want to share this research with you. He breaks it down in exact detail so that you can actually learn how to leverage the audiences of other people like I am today. Go to danches.com slash BOPA, B-O-P-A, in order to get access to Brian's resource and guide on how to leverage partnerships and other people's audiences in order to generate high paying ticket clients. Now, again, that's danches.com slash B-O-P-A. So I'm looking at my own ChatGPT account and I am migrating from one I've been using for years to a new ChatGPT account. That is kind of an episode for another day. Uh, but you could see over on the left hand side of my screen, we have all the different things we have like in the menu of ChatGPT, right? We got new chat, search chat, library for all the images, codex, which nobody here who's listening to this uses that, Sora, which is the video platform. We have GPTs. I've covered that in many videos in the past about how to get started with uh, custom GPTs. That's also just a plus and pro feature unless you're using somebody else's custom GPTs. And then we have this new thing, or at least it's new for you if you've been on a free account. If you've been on a plus account, you've had this here for since December. Uh, but it says it's got a little folder icon and it says new project. If you have existing projects, all your projects are underneath that. And the cool thing is they're essentially little folders for organizing conversations. But there's so much more than that, though they are useful just for that. You can see I have a folder open for Solo Scaled, my company where I help solopreneurs grow their audience and reach online through a podcast. Um, and I have a bunch of different conversations that I've had there. And you can see that they're all grouped within Solo Scaled. And that's really useful because let's be honest, we've all lost the conversations before. We're like, what was that thing that I had going on with ChatGPT? It was from weeks ago, months ago, but I can't find it. Ah, it's a lot easier now if you could just keep it organized in the folder that it should be going in. So I've been using folders like these, these project folders to organize different parts of my life, whether it's for Solo Scaled, this show, the AI Driven Marketer, I have a whole folder just for my fitness life and nutrition uh, to keep all those organized in one spot. I have a whole folder just for LinkedIn posts. Now, later on in this conversation, I'm going to be talking about how I'm using it for all these different things. But just to kind of give you an idea, it's it's a way to organize the different areas of your life that you're having frequent conversations with, so ChatGPT. And it's helpful for that, but that's not the only thing that it's helpful for. Uh, one quick side note, though, if you've had conversations with like vanilla chat GPT, you could always find them back here and say, let's see, AI tool usage. I'm just going to go ahead and take, nope, this was from a custom GPT. You could take past conversations you've had 
and drag and drop them into folders. If you had it, you're like, oh, this should have gone in this folder. You can actually drag them and drop them or click on the little dot, dot, dot icon, hover down the menu and say add to project and then add it later in there. So I don't have any I want to add today. So let's dive into the next aspects of projects that make them awesome. I'm cl clicking into my AI driven marketer uh, conversation. I only have two conversations in here because again, it's a new account transferring a lot of stuff over. Um, the main thing that makes projects awesome is that ChatGPT can keep track of the conversations within it. Not only is it helpful for you to keep track of what conversations are happening where, it's also helpful for ChatGPT to keep track of what conversations belong with which ones, right? How to group them together in such a way to be able to leverage information from past conversations in future conversations related to the project. And this is a really important thing. So when you have a converse, new conversation, you'd be like, hey, refer back to that last conversation. Or, hey, remember when we were talking about this topic? Now you can actually actually incorporate that into it. Now, ChatGPT as a whole, of course, has account-wide memory now, um, which it can retain a summary of every single conversation you've had with it. And of course, it has a larger summary of more recent conversations and a smaller summary of uh, the conversations you've had with it months or years ago. And that's kind of how it works. Until recently, you they kind of overlapped a little bit. Yeah, ChatGPT might remember a little bit more of the summary from within the project, but it also had some access to summaries from within other projects. And this was kind of a breakdown with projects when they released memory across your whole account. There was bleed over from one project to another, but that's one of the major updates they, they just made to it yesterday. That's why I'm recording this video today, is that they now give you the ability to be able to control that. And you can only do it on new projects. So let me show you real quick. I'm going to make a new project. I'm just going to call this project test. Oh, you know what? Let me let me start over. Let me do new project. I'm going to call it test two. And when you set up the project, there's this little gear icon. <laughs> it has a name and it gives you little suggestions of what to name it or whatever. It's like investing, homework, writing. Uh, I'm just going to call this one test two. But there's this little gear icon at the very top. You can now specify whether you want to use default memory, uh, which is how projects have been working, where there's overlap or one uh, your project can access memories from outside the project and conversations outside the project can access the summaries of what's going on within the project. That's pretty useful, especially if you have overlap between it, like I do between the AI driven marketer and solo scaled sometimes and solo scaled helping people launch podcasts. And I'm using podcast AI driven marketer is my podcast. It's helpful for those projects to blend a little bit. But what if you don't want it to blend? What if you have clients where you don't want anything else from your other conversations interfering for the instructions you have for your client that you're working on and using ChatGPT to make maybe some of their, their website material or something like that? Ah, now they have this new project only. And that is a really helpful distinction because it actually keeps all the different summaries from past conversations out of the project and keeps all the other conversations happening outside the project from accessing memories within the project. So it's a two-way barrier. It keeps things from leaving and it keeps things from coming in. And this fixes a lot of things for people who manage clients or maybe have different areas of their life that they want to keep very separate. Uh, it's just helpful for a number of different things. It, it fixes a lot of the problems we had with projects before. But you do have to set it up at the beginning. Once you determine one of these things, when you first set it up, it's locked in. So I'm going to go ahead and click project only for this one and click create a project. You can see I now have my project test two, and there's no conversations underneath it, but there's a few different things you'd want to keep in mind when you're creating a project. And that is you can go over here on the upper right in the upper right hand side, it has this little button here called add files. This used to be located right underneath the chat window in a new project. There was an add files button uh, on the left and an instructions button on the right. We'll get back to where the instructions thing went, but it's still there. Uh, but you can add files. You can drag and drop PDFs, docs, spreadsheets, or all kinds of information here so that ChatGPT can have access to it for future reference. It's really nice, especially if you're working on a project like I am with the AI driven marketer, right? I have lots of conversations with ChatGPT about this very show that you're listening to. And if I go to that project, you can see I have one file uploaded and it is a personal brand guide 
for myself. I actually have my own personal brand fairly fleshed out. And because my personal brand, Dan Chez, and the AI Driven Marketer overlap so much, since this is a personal podcast, uh, it references that often when creating new marketing materials for the AI Driven Marketer. It's just a helpful thing for it to know what my brand values are, the aesthetics, and all that different kind of stuff. So that's a file it has access to in the files section. It's just a piece of context that can always have access to. But every conversation within the AI Driven Marketer folder will have access to this one file. You can't have one file and only make it available to one conversation or the other. Now, there used to be another piece over that was more easily accessible, and they kind of buried this a little bit, but it's actually one of the more powerful features within projects. So over in the upper right-hand corner, again, that little dot, dot, dot icon, to show you more, you can, of course, go to edit project where you can change the name and do some other things like pick a different icon or a color for the little icon. Um, but you have edit instructions. This is the advanced feature that very few people take advantage of. For example, I'm looking at the instructions for the AI driven marketer, and it essentially has a bunch. It looks like code. It's actually just marked down. It's just formatted text. Um, markdowns just kind of like the simple way of saying instead of giving it a header it has a little like pound pound and then you know some other formatting things to help chat you could understand how I'm organizing it but it doesn't even have to be that you could literally just write the purpose of this project is and then insert your purpose the instructions are what power the project the instructions are essentially telling and giving context to what this whole project is even about. Um, you don't have to give it instructions. It could just have the context from conversation to conversation and have ChatGPT figure it out. But if you want AI to be a thinking partner, if you really want it to act like a second brain, I promise giving it instructions is one of the most powerful things you can do. In fact, one of the things I try to do within the first conversation of every new project is to have a conversation with ChatGPT about what the instructions should be. So I say, hey, ChatGPT, I'd really like to start a new project about something like, I don't know, my health goals. Ask me questions to clarify what my health goals are so that we could generate instructions that guide this project. You could see that this is exactly what I did for this, hence all the formatting and different things going on um, that power this project. It's all the context around what the AI-driven marketer is and what it stands for so that it can have that every time I submit a new prompt to it, every time we have a new conversation about the show, it has that context available. So I highly recommend that every time you have a new project, uh, a new start a new project within ChatGPT, just say, hey, ChatGPT, what I want to create instructions so that we have context for everything that happens within this project. Here are the goals. Ask me questions to gain clarity around what they are and then help me turn that into instructions that I can copy and paste into the instructions part of the project. It will make the project way more powerful, even if it's just basic context and a purpose statement to guide AI into helping you accomplish the goals for this project. So now that we got the overview out of the way, let's talk about how I'm using projects. Like I've already previewed a few, a little bit of it before. Like the AI driven marketer is a podcast. If you have a content channel, that's a big deal to you. You should definitely have a project for it. As you're talking about new ideas, formatting episodes, changing the theme. I don't know, whatever you're having, like, have a project for every single major channel, not every channel. I don't have a, a TikTok project because I'm not, a, I don't have a big focus on TikTok. I do for LinkedIn. That's another project I have. And I actually have formatted that project special just, and I'll show you that in a minute, but I actually have a LinkedIn project. So you should have a project. If you have a podcast or a specific blog, whatever you're, if you have a major channel that you're focused on as a marketer, you should absolutely have a project for it. If you have different brands that you manage, you should have projects for each brand. If you're a freelancer or an agency, you should absolutely have different folders for different clients. And now they fix the problem of the bleed over from past conversations or from other clients. You can actually set it to only contain or access memories from within that particular uh, project. So that helps a lot with that. Um, if you're using this for a lot of personal things, you could set up different areas of your life. Maybe you're focused on your financial goals right now and you're really trying to hammer that home. Maybe you're trying to get rid of debt or you're trying to invest and you're trying to look at trying to grow as an investor. You can make a whole project for that, call it finance and give it a purpose statement of what you're trying to accomplish there so that every time you're asking questions about different things like I am about fitness, let me 
can see I can go over to my fitness tab here and you can see I even have like this I even had a conversation with this morning about my rowing machine and the intensity of how I'm rowing and if I'm hitting zone two workouts so I could burn more fat and all that kind of conversations I was confused about something so I had a conversation nice thing about it is that it has the context for what my fitness goals are because I put it over in the instructions again if I go over to the right hand side and click edit instructions you could see I have my wellness project instructions build and maintain you can see the purpose statement is build and maintain a sustainable habit based health habit based health system that maximizes daily energy longevity and mental clarity all in service of living a God glorifying life. So that was the purpose statement that I co-crafted with ChatGPT and I have core principles in it. I got a current baseline of fitness of where I'm at, what my, my nutrition regimen is, uh, my goals and motivation, my guidance for future conversations. That's it. That's a really simple set of instructions that kind of guides all the conversations. So when I'm talking about cholesterol or creatine or anaerobic breakdowns, <laughs> like it has the context to all of that and all the context from past conversations we've had before in order for it to help help me improve my fitness. So areas of life is a great way to improve how you're using ChatGPT because now you can have all those conversations with in one folder and ChatGPT can do a better job of keeping track instead of having them scattered all over the account, you know, where your fitness stuff is mixed in with your marketing stuff, mixed in with that conversation you had about how to handle this this problematic habit of your, your daughter or something like that, then it's not all mixed in. They're all organized in folders. Helpful for you? Helpful for ChatGPT to keep straight of your chaotic life. I know it's helpful for mine. So I also have a folder for Smack, which is the software company that I'm building to help people uh, distribute their podcasts and one for my LinkedIn post. And I'm gonna finish the conversation with this LinkedIn post because this LinkedIn post project is a little bit different. I actually build this a lot like I build a lot of my custom GPTs in that the instructions produce one thing. They only accomplish one thing specific thing. I don't have random conversations here about LinkedIn. I don't ask it about if this or that were good. It accomplishes one task. Every time I dictate a thought here, it turns it into three LinkedIn posts. And that's what the instructions told it to do. In fact, let me open it up for you and I'll give you a little preview here. It says the purpose uh, so I started this as a GPT. It's now a project, but this GPT exists to take raw ideas, outlines, or draft snippets from Dan Sanchez and turn them into polished final LinkedIn ready posts reflecting Dan's distinct style, tone strategy. It may also suggest images when appropriate. So it actually takes all my, my writing style, all the different do's or don'ts that I have for LinkedIn image styles, workflows and instructions. It takes a raw idea. I give it and then turns it into three different LinkedIn posts, a long one, a short and concise one, and a spicy take version of the post. And I usually pick one of the three and post it to LinkedIn. And that's how this works. Now, if you want to see those instructions because you're like, man, I'd like to have a project that does that. I just toss in my idea or a blog post or something else I've written and have it turn it into three awesome LinkedIn posts. Ah, I actually created a guide just for you. If you go to LinkedIn, sorry, if you go to danchez.com slash instapost, and I'll drop a link to this in the description, but danchez.com slash instapost, you will be taken to a page like this one where you can get the exact instructions that power my LinkedIn post project. So you could just toss raw ideas in there and get three professionally formatted uh, LinkedIn posts that you can kind of pick, you can pick and then edit and then post to LinkedIn. It helps saves me a lot of time because there is a certain writing style and format that works well for LinkedIn. And I broke it down into three different types so that every idea gets turned into three posts that I can use, or I just pick the winner and post that. So that's another way to use these projects is you give instructions that say, every time I give you this, you do that. And that's how this project works for me. There are a ton of different ways to use ChatGPT projects. Hopefully this has given you an idea about how to use it to organize your life, organize your work, organize your clients, or even come up with tools like my LinkedIn post one, uh, which I hope you go and grab your copy of it. If even only just to learn how I set it up at danchez.com slash instapost. Uh,